Hi everyone, a very good evening. I think this will be my 36th dish that I'm planning today. And again, as feedback has come in, my friends would like to see some dishes like the Sikandri Ran or the Vindalu. There is a history or a legacy or a heritage or some distortion that has happened. So one of the dishes I'm going to do today is, is that. Uh, and I thought of doing that because I'm making some elaborate dinner plans tonight. We got, uh, I'm making Hainan chicken rice, hot and sour soup, kale. And I thought with this kind of combination of food, one thing that's going to go with spicy, non-spicy, because hot and sour is spicy, Hainan is not. I want to make one which is, has an amazing history and a heritage, Bombay duck. Now, it is nothing to do with Bombay. Of course, it has something to do with Bombay insofar as the name, but it's more a Konkani Western Ghats dish and is nothing to do with duck, as in the bird, right? Uh, it's actually a fish dish. The interesting heritage here or the, or the kind of the legend here is how it got the name Bombay duck and which is what I want to share before I make it today. A very easy dish to make. <clears throat> so, you know, um, <clears throat> The, the, the East also enjoys where I come from, and, and this, this is this is pre you know this is British India, uh, uh, and this is undivided Bengal, and they have, they have huge fishing uh, population, Bengal and Assam, and th this particular dried fish that was kind of enjoyed by the Konkani region or the Konkan regions, where they go up, you know Maharashtra, uh, the Ghat area as we call it, in the western side, it's a dried fish made very spicy, well done, uh, you know, with lots of onion. Uh, and and then, then the people in the East wanted to have this fish as well, this dried fish. It was kind of a four inch long dried fish. I don't remember what it's called. It's a very local name. It used to sun dry it and then, but it has a horrible smell, especially if you're, if you're, if you're transporting in bulk. And those is the few, the railways was the basic artery between all these cities. And they, but, you know, bringing this in a passenger train was a was a huge problem because of the stench it would give. Now there are various stories to how this came to be called Bombay duck, but if you look at all the stories, there's one underlying story, and this is what I'm narrating. So they decided that to in the British India days, those days, there was the mails or the postal mails would go through all the major cities in the railways. There was not a passenger train; it was a mail train, as we call it in India. And that's how these fishes used to be transported <clears throat> because there's no passenger, right? And then they would come from Bombay, which is then called Bombay, to Kolkata, which is a Howrah station, or Calcutta it was called then, through the mail train, which was called the Bombay Mail Train. Now, mail, M-A-I-L, the postal mail in India is called Dak, D-A-K, right? So post office is called a dakkhana, as an example, right? A postman is called a dakya, right? That's, that's kind of the things. So this was for the locals, the Bombay duck mail. And then slowly the generic term became that, did you get the Bombay duck mail stuff? What was that? That was the dried fish coming out of uh, the Western Ghats from, the, uh, through Bom from Bombay to Kolkata. With time, the word mail got dropped. So people said, did you get the Bombay duck stuff? With time, let's have a Bombay duck. And suddenly the D-A-K got D-U-C-K. So that is how Bombay duck came. But it has nothing to do with Bombay or, or D-U-C-K, the duck. This is what I'm going to make today. So let me show you. Now, I have, this is, you know, sometimes dried fish can become an, it's not an acquired taste. It has to come innate, right? Uh, but I, and I was I, although I come from a fish eating region, I never ever liked or enjoyed eating fish because of the bone and river fish has lots of bone. Uh, and then of course over the years staying in Hong Kong, I kind of acquired taste for dried fish, but only what I would call the anchovy family, which is really small dried fish or prawns, but not the big ones. So the so the uh, the, the fish I'm going to make today is actually from Philippines. Uh, it, it's a, it's anchovy family. Uh, I forgot the name, but I'll come back when I do it. I'll tell you the name. And uh, uh, you know, our, our uh, home help Julie got this from from uh, Philippines, a dried fish. And I'm going to make with that because I've got I can take that, but I can't take the you know the, the big ones, right? So let me show you show you the fish. I've got about about a hundred grams of this dried fish. It's really small. And the cooking process is the first step of the cooking process. I have to rinse it, right? Because it has been sun dried. Out in the open so I'm gonna just put a little bit of 
water slowly so that the fish don't break right and I'm going to use this big one and just pour it and I do it two or three times and that's that's how I'm going to rinse this fish and I'll take you the next step after I wash the fish all right, so I have washed the fish. I've drained the water. This is a strainer. It's it, this fish is called. I remember now. It's called dillis. It's very anchovy family from Philippines, right? And then I'm going to basically open up a towel. I, I want this fish to be dry, so I'm going to just spread it out. You know, and these are very fragile, right? Because these are all kind of. So I'm going to spread it, and I'm just going to use my hand, spread it out very, very, very carefully because you don't want this fish to break. These are very fragile, and then cover it and let it dry for some time okay so what i've done is i've transferred the fish from the towel to you know, the cloth towel to a paper towel now i've done two twists to uh, i've done two twists onto the uh, dish right the first twist i did was i did not use the typical three to five inch long fish that they use uh, uh, traditionally in, in in the bombay duck uh, dish because I, I i don't have an acquired taste for that i i, I can i never develop an acquired taste for the long fish that's the first day. so I use anchovy family the Dillis uh, fish from from Philippines the second twist I'm making or I'm doing is because I'm using these small fishes uh, or small fish uh, I am going to put a little bit of treatment on them which I picked up based on the Mediterranean or Italian dish of how they cook anchovy so let me do that and show you so I'm going to put this and take some flour the reason we do this is because these are very fine fish. If you fry, if you cook them without doing this treatment, they will all break up, right? So I do this, and then I kind of stir them out and get the flour mixed into the. And here I have oil that's getting heated up right now, right? So I'm going to fry it. I'm going to deep fry it. And the reason for using the flour is that it doesn't kind of the the fish holds, right? Otherwise, the fish will crackle out or, or it'll just melt. So I'm going to put a little bit more. This is normal flour, corn flour. So I'm going to just, so you, as you can see, the fish is kind of getting marinated, if you will, with the, my oil is now really hot because I want it really hot, right? Because I want to make it deep fry. And I'm going to put the fish in this strainer. I'm just going to put it there and let it sizzle. Just, just for under about a minute or so, not more than that. I'm going to raise the flame a little bit and you just you have to do it on very very hot uh, flame right so all right now i've fried this for about three minutes they're really crispy what it does is it helps in not breaking up the fish right it's a two-step process now i'm going to switch it off and i am going to drain the fish strain out the oil and i'm using a steel uh, utensil so that the oil is extremely hot so i'm going to just you can see the fish is really crispy now so I'm going to just drain the oil and this is be careful of this hot oil and put it on another paper towel just for the oil to be soaked and I have the last step to go which I will do which is basically make the dish now one thing is important the way I make the Bombay duck it's like a it's a pickle or a, or a side dish with you know a kind of a yeah you can call it a salad or a side dish or a pickle it's definitely not the main course. So the last step, so while the fish is kind of, I'm, I'm allowing the, uh, the oil to get soaked out of, of the fish in the towel here, uh, let me just take you to the ingredients. So I've got uh, kind of three um, uh, shallots finely sliced, uh, two uh, green chili finely chopped. I'm going to use one, just one Kashmiri dry red chili. I'll kind of break it up and put it. And I'm going to use red chili powder, half a teaspoon, and turmeric, half a teaspoon for the size that I'm cooking. Now, when I, when you spice it up, when you and of course salt to taste. Now, when you spice it up, it takes away the flavor and gives a very different flavor. Now, I have had Bombay duck in Mumbai, where they it's a main course where you know you use tomatoes, etc. But I'm not going to use the tomatoes with this because this is dry and small, so the tomato will just make it completely soggy. So various ways to cook it. My way of cooking it, which is simple and easy, and show me family uh, kind of small fish. And you know, it's done in 10 minutes. Doesn't have this, the, uh, the flavor or the aroma or the smell, depending on what you call it, if you do this treatment. So we will come back 
and do the last step which only takes two minutes. The last step of cooking, you remember the oil that I used to fry it? I'm going to use the same oil, but I'm going to kind of be careful to take the top because the, uh, the dirt, uh, the fish things will be inside. So I'm going to take two and a half of that oil. So I'm going to heat up, put up the flame a little bit so that the oil is hot. Steps are very simple as I said. <clears throat> I'm going to first add the big image, break it up into four. What it does, it gives another additional uh, flavor. So the deggy milk, which is really the Kashmiri uh, red chili, dried red chili. So once, okay, the smells coming out of this, that's, I'm going to add the shallots and the green chili. I like my, you know, Bombay duck, I don't know if many, many people use it many, but I like it spiced up and lower the flame. Add some salt. And then lower the flame. It, it's a two minute to cook once you get the preparation all done. I'm gonna add kind of one fourth of the red chili, the, the powdered Kashmiri red chili. So I put one whole and then similarly half. Right? On low flame, increase the flame a little bit. And that's done. The gillis or the anchovies, whichever way you want to call it, it's kind of anchovies family, and stir it. <clears throat> right, it smells beautiful now. This stage, I'm going to take the same oil that I had capped and add a little bit more, and that's to basically pickle it out. You know, it gets pickled. Right, so you put the oil. No need to taste the salt because I know it's good enough. And in case I need to add. I can always add the salt, right, later, so, and you can make it and keep it uh, <clears throat> and have it as you go, so that's kind of, and that's your, that is your, you know, Bombay duck, and I try to give the history behind the Bombay duck and hope you enjoy it, You're, and uh, make it at home, it's actually very nice dish to have at home and anchovies as you know are high protein right so have a good night and look forward to the next dish